Hello, and welcome to the Dundas BI tutorial series video for creating and using filters on a dashboard. This video will provide a short demonstration of how to create filters on a dashboard and use them in Dundas BI's dashboard designer. The demonstration will show us connecting to some data that has order history. We're going to show the total amount ordered, add the ability to filter the total based on sales territory, add the ability to also filter the total based on the date of the order, Finally, we're going to add another set of data and use the same date filter to control that. Here we've got the Dundas BI Dashboard Designer open, and I've got some labels already set up showing where I'm going to put everything. First, let's drag in some Excel data. I get a table showing pretty much exactly what was in my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to open the data binding panel for this table to change things around a bit. First, there's a couple things that we don't care about. So let's remove record ID and row number. Order date and territory are still shown in the table, but I actually don't want this. Instead, I want to use those hierarchies as filters. To do this, I'm going to drag them from the rows section into slicers. Now the table just contains a single value, so let's revisualize to something more appropriate, like a data label. Now we need some controls to allow the user to actually choose values for those filters. Clicking the Filter button in the toolbar shows the supported filter control types. They are categorized into Numeric, Hierarchy, Date and Time, Text, and Checkbox. For our Territory filter, I'm going to choose a Member filter control. This control lets me choose from a list of items that are part of a hierarchy. In this case, my territories are just a single level hierarchy. For the date, I want to let the user choose a range, and I'll pick the calendar range control type, since we're dealing with dates. When we view the dashboard, the filter controls become interactive, and I can filter the data. For instance, I can choose to only show data from the United States, and now you can see that the amount changed from $935 to $540. I can also use the checkboxes to specifically choose a subset of items from the entire list. Similarly, I can filter the date using my date range filter control. Let's say I only want to see orders placed between two specific dates, October 1st and 10th. All I need to do is select those dates from the calendar and my data will be automatically filtered. The small white triangles which appear on the right hand side of all the filter input controls provide access to filter token functionality. Filter tokens are names that are associated with computed values behind the scenes. For instance, if you look at the available tokens on the date filter, you'll see things like current month, quarter, week, and year, previous month, and year to date. There are also special tokens which correspond to all values, which means nothing gets filtered, and open boundaries, such as in the case of a date range. Let's reset the date filter back to all and switch back to edit mode. Here, you may notice that the value of the territory filter is still Canada and USA. This is because when you switch back into edit mode, the values of any filters get saved as the defaults for the dashboard. If you wish to use the dashboard without changing the defaults, try the Sandbox View button on the toolbar. Before we go on, I'll need to talk a little bit about view parameters and their relationship to filters. View parameters are the dashboard's way of connecting a filter control to the underlying data structure. When you create a filter control, a corresponding view parameter is automatically created for you, so you don't need to worry about that. However, if you ever need to change anything about the way your filter control works, you may need to work with the view parameter itself. The parameters tool window is the place to go if you ever want to examine or change any properties of a filter control. By default, it's located in a tab at the bottom of the screen, but for this video, I'm going to drag it onto the right side of the designer. When you open the parameters tool window, you'll see all the view parameters that were created when we added the filter controls, plus one called brush view parameter, which is automatically created by the system. Expanding any of the view parameters shows you which controls it's being used on and which underlying structure is supplying the data. I forgot to specify a friendly name for my date parameter, so let's go in and fix that now. Let's edit the territory filter. 
And now we have the option to change and or modify its display name, scripting name for advanced scenarios, the initial value, and the controls which it's going to affect. Here I'll change the default value of the territory filter from USA and Canada to just Canada. Now let's say I want to have a label which shows my order amount across all territories, but still filtered by date. This is the same thing that I already have, just without the territory filter. Let's copy and paste the existing data label for the amount. When I paste it, it's a totally new control, so it's not attached to any of the existing view parameters. All I need to do to accomplish my goal here is to edit my date view parameter and include the order date from my new data label. When we view the dashboard, we can see that the territory filter is only affecting the first data label, but the date filter is affecting both. Thanks for watching the Creating and Using Filters on a Dashboard video, part of the Dundas BI tutorial series. For more videos and articles in the series, please visit www.dundas.com support.